the Davenport Automatic Screw Machine. Preventive Maintenance Procedures. The lubricating system, the coolant oil system, the brake, the tolerance of the workpieces, the lubricating system. Before you begin your shift, with the machine off, oily alumite fittings with an oil gun. Never use grease because the close tolerances will not allow grease to penetrate and lubricate bearing surfaces. Fill the Bezier lubricating pump. Start the machine. Push the flush button on the Bezier pump. This will give a surge of fresh lubricating oil to the high pressure automatically lubricated parts. Index the machine a minimum of five times so that the oil reaches the bearings on each work spindle since the work spindles are lubricated only in the fourth position. Note, the machine should never be run for any length of time without cycling since the bearings on the work spindles are lubricated only in the fourth position. Also check the high and low pressure gauges. The coolant oil system. Check the cutting oil level by looking through the opening at the base of the machine beneath the coolant oil pump. The top level of the cutting oil should be just below the chip pan level so that the cutting oil can drain from the chips when the machine is turned off. Be sure the cutting oil is on when making work pieces. Visually check to be sure the coolant lines are at the cutting edges of the tools. Adjust the lines if necessary. The brake. After starting the machine, but before making work pieces, check the brake to be sure it is not slipping. An easy way to check the brake is to watch the slot on the bearing spindle opening and closing cam. If the brake is slipping, the machine will not operate at a consistent rate of speed and the slot will appear to jump. If the brake is slipping, the proper adjustment should be made before you start to machine work pieces. The machine should be warm and the brake clean before making final brake adjustments. Newer model brakes have Belleville spring washers to equalize the braking pressure when the brake is activated. Tolerance of the work pieces. At the beginning of each shift, after the lubricating system, cutting oil system, and brake are checked, warm the machine up 15 or 20 minutes. Then make five work pieces, one from each spindle. Gauge each workpiece to be sure it meets the tolerance specifications for that particular job. Preventative maintenance when stocking the Davenport. As you stock the machine, check for these problems. Loose feed fingers, broken chuck levers, broken chuck lever pins, chuck tension, starting clutch tension. Loose feed fingers. While stocking each spindle, notice how the stock feeds as you push it with a stock paddle. Check for loose feed fingers on each work spindle by using the cam lever handle in the feed lever and moving it back and forth with the feed lever roll throw out disengaged. 
If the stock slides easily through the feed finger with little or no resistance, check the feed finger tension and bar stock for size. The feed finger or pad should be replaced or adjusted. Broken chuck levers. While stocking, also check for broken chuck levers on each spindle as follows. Engage the starting clutch. Open the chuck. Manually turn the hand wheel so that the chuck lever is in sight. Disengage the starting clutch. With the cam lever handle, manually close the chuck. If the chuck lever is broken, the piece closest to the revolving head will not move when pressure from the cam lever handle is exerted to close the chuck. Using the same procedure, check the other chuck lever in the fulcrum that is located 180 degrees from the first one. If a chuck lever is broken, both levers must be replaced. If a chuck lever is broken, call maintenance. Remember to repeat this procedure on all five spindles. Broken chuck lever pins. After checking for broken chuck levers and before closing each chuck, check for broken chuck lever pins. Look to be sure the pin shows through both sides of the fulcrum. This can be done at the same time as the check for broken chuck levers. If the pin shows through both sides, the pin is in one piece. A broken pin usually falls out of the fulcrum. Check the chuck lever pins on all five work spindles as stated. Chuck tension. Check for chuck tension while stocking the machine. Disengage the starting clutch. Close the chuck with the cam lever handle. While closing, note the chuck tension. Proper tension will have some resistance and a snap to it. If a chuck is loose, check the bar for size. If the bar is a proper size, Adjust the chuck tension. Repeat this procedure on all five work spindles. Starting clutch tension. While stocking, check the tension on the starting clutch. As you become accustomed to operating the Davenport automatic screw machine, you will notice that the starting clutch will also have a snap to it. If the clutch engages or disengages without much resistance, make the proper adjustment. Operator maintenance during the shift. Be sure to follow the procedure using the oil gun and oil all alumite fittings. Periodically during each shift, check the oil gauges to make sure the machine is being lubricated. It is also important that the machine and the work area be neat and clean. Here are some housekeeping procedures to follow each shift. Wipe down the machine's covers and hoods, oil guards. Brush or wash the chips off to critical areas. Sweep the floor clean with an oil absorbent material. Put away all tooling, cams, and attachments from the last job. Clean the workbenches. Clean the chips from the bed of the machine. Scrape and let drain. Remove the chips after sufficient draining. Check the condition of the cam rolls and pins each time the cams are changed. If a sudden diameter or length change occurs, check the respective cam roll immediately. 
To check for broken cam lever rolls and pins, jog the machine to half index or 3 o'clock on the slot on the burning spindle opening and closing cam. Disengage the starting clutch. Put the cam lever handle in the hole in the cam lever. Exert pressure forward on the cam lever handle to lift the cam lever. With the other hand, reach under the cam lever and determine if the roll turns freely. Then check for flat spots. Check to see if the roll moves back and forth on the pin or is loose. Use the above procedure on all cam rolls and pins. If the rolls turn freely, are not loose and have no flat spots, the machine can be run. The locating and locking lever. How to check the locating and locking lever for proper tension. Jog the machine into the working position or approximately 9 o'clock on the slot on the burring spindle opening and closing cam. Disengage the starting clutch. Hold the locating and locking lever roll with one hand and apply torque with the thumb and finger. With the other hand, tap the top of the lever with a lead or brass hammer. The roll should skid while the lever is being tapped. The roll should not move when the lever is not being tapped, but the roll should turn while the machine is cycling. You have now completed the primary instruction for the Davenport automatic screw machine in both operation and operation maintenance. Remember, to become an efficient and versatile operator requires a lot of practical experience. The more experience you have, the more valuable an operator you will become. We are hoping that this training is the successful beginning of your Davenport endeavors.